Hello everyone, welcome to the presentation of the paper on the combination of polyhedral abstraction and SMT-based model checking for PetriNet. I am Nicolas Amat, I'm a first year PhD student, and this work was realized with Bernard Bertomieu and Silvano Dalzilio at the La CNRS lab. First, to understand what led us to develop this new approach for the model checking of PetriNet, we can have a look at some well-known optimization techniques. And many results are based on linear algebra and linear programming techniques. For instance, we can obtain some potentially reachable markings by solving the state equation, or we can find some place invariants known as p invariants. And there are many other um, techniques that are based on linear algebra. Another optimization technique is the use of structural reductions that have been introduced by Bertolo in 1987. The goal is to reduce the pretty net that we want to verify by preserving some properties, such as the lock, for instance. But 30 years after, the Vertex team developed new structural reduction with linear equations. And the aim of these linear equations was to keep uh, to preserve enough information about the reachable marking of the initial net in order to rebuild the state space of the initial net by knowing the one of the reduced net. And this paper answers the question, does it feel well with SMT-based methods? So we are interested in the verification of some reachability properties and the properties in invariant if all the reachable markings satisfy the property. So, on the left, you have an example of a pretty net, and on the right, an example of a reachability property. And this property is an invariant if we always have the same number of tokens in place P4 and P5, and the number of tokens contained in place P1 and P2 is always smaller than 5. A property is reachable when there exists at least one reachable marking that satisfies the property. And we have a new example of reachability property, and this one is reachable if we can have more than one token in place P1 and less than two tokens in place P6. So, a marking can be seen as a formula, and in more particular as a conjunction, where we introduce one variable per place, and where we add the constraint that the variable must be equal to the cor corresponding marking. If you remember the initial marking of the previous net, we had five tokens in place P0. So we had the constraint P0 is equal to five. We had also four tokens in place P6, so we had the constraint P6 is equal to four. And for all the other places, we had the constraint that must be equal to zero. Checking that a property is reachable is equivalent to check if, the, 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 uh, to check if there exists a reachable marking M, such as the formula phi and M is sat. Checking that the property is an invariant is equivalent to check that for all the reachable marking, we always have not phi and M and sat. And so we are interested in uh, different kinds of reachability properties and we restate them into the quantifier-free linear integral arithmetic theory. So, for instance, we have the coverability, the reachability, the quasi-liveness, and the deadlock. And by composing all these properties by, uh, using some conjunction and disjunction or negation, we are able to construct all the formula from the reachability category of the model checking contest. Let me make a first connection with the SMT-based method. It seems that the quantifier-free linear integral arithmetic theory is a good fit for what we want to do, because using this theory, we can deal with unbounded pretty nets. That is not the case using the quantifier-free bit vector theory. And we can also deal with generalized pretty nets, meaning we can have some weight on the arc, or we, can, or we can use some different kind of arcs, such as inhibitor arcs or read arcs. And it seems to be a good fit for the properties that we are interested in. Now, I will introduce to you our net reductions with linear equation. So at the top of the slide on the left, you have an example of a pretty net, say N1. And this pretty net is composed of two places, the place X and the place Y. And at the initial marking, we have three tokens in place x. We can reduce this net 
in a smaller one, say N2, that is composed of only one place, the place A, that contains three tokens. And during the reduction, we obtain a linear equation, the equation A is equal to X plus Y. And so from the state space of the reduced net, and using the equation A is equal to X plus Y, we are able to rebuild the state space of the initial net N1. This relation between state spaces can be represented by the diagram on the right. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, uh, you have a one-dimension uh, axis, the x-axis, that represents the reachable markings of the reduced net N2. And so if we have two tokens uh, in place A, okay, we can project the equation A equal x plus y. And so we obtain the corresponding marking in the initial net. We can have two tokens in place Y and zero in place X, one token in both places, and two tokens in place X and zero in place Y. So we call this the polydual model checking or the polydual approach because we have an initial net with a complicated state space and we reduce this net in a smaller one with a smaller state space. And from the linear equations that we obtain during the reductions, we are able to rebuild the state space of the initial net by knowing the one of the reduced net. And we call this a polydual approach because we have a partition of the reachable markings of the initial net into convex sets. So let me make a second connection with the SMT-based methods because, again, the quantifier free linear integral arithmetic theory seems also to be a good fit for our reduction equations. So now I will talk more in detail about, uh, about, uh, about the polydor abstraction and we will formalize it. So if we take an, uh, an example of a pretty net, uh, the pretty net on the left, so that is the same from the introduction slide, we have a structural invariance. We always have the same number of tokens in place P4 and P5. So we have the equation P5 is equal to P4. So we can remove one of both places. And for instance, we can remove place P5 and we obtain the reduced net on the right. Uh, so we formalize some reduction rules and this rule is called the redundant rule. And on the slide, you have a formalization of the redundant rule. But if we take the last reduced net without the place P5, um, we have two patterns, the pattern in blue and the same pattern in purple. So if we look at the pattern in blue, we have two places, place P1 and place P2, and between them we have a transition, the transition T1. We can concatenate both places into a new one, say the place A1, and we obtain the equation A1 is equal to P1 plus P2. So if I have one token in place A1, I have either one token in place P1 or one token in place P2. And we can do the same by introducing a new place, a place A2, and we obtain an equation A2 is equal to P3 plus P4. This rule is called the concatenate rule, and on the slide you have a formalization of this rule. And now if we take the last reduced net with the new places, the place A1 and the place A2, we have again the redundant rule. Because firing transition T9 will never change the marking in, in the place A2. So we have the equation A1 is equal to A2 and we can remove the place A1. And so we obtain a new reduced net. So as I said in the introduction, a marking can be associated to a system of equations where we introduce one variable per place. And a linear system E is satisfiable for marking M if the system EM has solutions. So if you take two markings, uh, one marking from the initial net, say M1, and one marking from the reduced net, say M2, we say that they are compatible if they are equal for the common places of bond net. And now we want to define a new notion of abstraction and equivalence in order to prove that our reduction are sound. And so in this new notion of equivalence, we want to capture the fact that all we have an equivalence between all the reachable markings in the initial net and the one in the reduced net modulo our system of linear equation E. So we say that N2 is the E abstraction of N1 if it satisfies two conditions. First, 
The initial markings must be compatible and there must also be solution of the linear system E. And the second condition is that uh, for all the reachable marking M1 prime is initial net, we must able to find some markings M2 prime that are compatible with uh, the marking M1 prime and also solution of the linear system E. And for all such solutions, we must able to find the following sequence leading to M2 prime. And when we have the abstraction in both ways, we, said, we say that we have the E abstraction equivalence, and we choose a non-symmetric symbol in order to stress the fact that uh, there are less places in the reduced net N2 than in the initial net N1. So we can represent the E abstraction equivalence graphically, like on this slide. So assume M1 is the, is the initial marking of uh, the initial net N1, and M2 is the initial marking of the reduced net N2, and we must have M1 and M2 compatible, and that marking must satisfy the linear system E. But if in the initial net I'm able to reach marking M1 prime, there must exist at least one marking M2 prime that is compatible to M1 prime and that satisfies the linear system E, and for all such solutions, I must be able to find the very seconds that lead to this marking. So we have a kind of axiomatic system. We have some axioms, um, the redu reduction rule, such as the redundant and concatenate rule, but we have also some rule because we can compose the reduction and the transitivity preserve um, the E abstraction equivalence. Uh, so uh, we have a preservation using the relabeling. So now we will go more in details uh, in the SMT-based model chicken part of the paper. So the initial problem is, given a reachability formula F1, is F1 reachable on the initial net N1? And to answer this problem, we construct a new formula that we call the E-transform formula of F1, that is composed of F1 and our linear system of equation E, where we replace the places by some variables, and if the place is common to both nets, we add the constant that the variables must be equal. And so now we have a new problem. Is the E transform formula F2 reachable on the radius net N2? Okay, and this problem is much simpler. So from the E transform formulas, we obtain two main theorems. So the given formula, um, the given reachability formula is an invariant on the initial net N1 if and only if its E transform formula is also an invariant on the reduced net N2. And we have the same result for the reachability that we call the reachability conservation. So from all this theory and this new framework, we develop a model checker called the SMPT. Um, for satisfiability model presenet, and this model checker is available online on GitHub, and it's open source and written in Python. So, this model checker is based on two main methods. The first one is the, model uh, the bounded model checking method, or BMC, uh, and it is used to find some counterexample by unfolding the net. But we have also a method that is called the property-directed reachability in order to prove some invariants, and we adapted this method for generalized petty net using reductions in the covariability case. So now we will look at some experimental results to know if this new approach is efficient or not. And the first question is to know the, preleva the prevalence of the reductions in real life. So we took all the instances from the model checking contest, we computed the reduction ratio, and what we can, what we found is that uh, more than one third of the instances can be reduced by more than 50%, and more than a half of the instances can be reduced by more than 30%. So yeah, there are a lot of reduction in the nature. But no, uh, we know that we can have a lot of predictions, okay? But we need to compare, for example, the computation times. So we will compare the computation times uh, for uh, the properties from the, from the model checking contest with and without using reductions for the instances with a reduction ratio between 50% and 99%. 
So on the slide, you have a scatter plot, okay? The x-axis represents the computation time without reduction, and the y-axis represents the computation time with reduction. We chose a logarithmic scale, and we have at the top a density bar chart uh, for the x-axis, and on the right, a density bar chart for the y-axis. And the two orange dashed line represent uh, uh, the speed up. So the first one represents a speed up of 10, and the second one represents a speed up of 100. So what we can see is that a lot of properties time out in two minutes uh, without the use of reductions. But this property uh, can be computed using reduction in a really quick time. So yeah, when you have a, a good reduction ratio, our approach uh, is really efficient and permits to accelerate the computation of some reachability property. But another question is, if I have an instance with a low reduction ratio, is our method and our new approach still, re still efficient? So uh, you have the same scatter plot, but this time, for instances, from the model checking contest with a reduction ratio between 1 and 24%. And what we see is that there are still a lot of properties that time out in two minutes without the use of reductions, but we are able to compute all this property using reduction. And we have a lot of property with, uh, we obtain a speed up um, of 10 for a lot of properties, etc. So we can have a look at some concrete instances. For instance, if we take the model Amcatch coherence, we know the state space is about 300 million states. But the reduction ratio is about 70%. That is low. But if we look at the mean computation time using reduction, we can see that it is about one second. And the mean computation time without the use of reduction is about 20 seconds. So for a low reduction ratio, that is about 17, we have a speed up of 20. That is quite huge for this reduction ratio. But now we can look at uh, an, instant, an instance with a huge reduction ratio, for example, the airplane LD1000 model. The state space is unknown, but the reduction ratio is about 99%. And using reductions, we are able to compute 14 properties, and without reduction, we are not able to compute any property. So I will conclude on this work, and we, I will talk about uh, some perspective to continue uh, to develop this new approach. So first, we develop a new promising framework for the use of reduction with SMT-based method. And uh, so we define a new equivalence relation that we call the E-abstraction equivalence. And in, in this paper, you will find some contribution for SMT-based algorithm. For instance, we adapted the PDO algorithm for the generalized pretty net in the coverability case. But we have a lot of perspectives. For instance, we want to, we will release a new version of SMPT uh, with an adaptation of PDO for the reachability case that we have done uh, recently. And also, we want to prove automatically uh, some E abstraction equivalences between pretty nets. During the next PIN conference, we will present a new paper about the computation of concurrent, pa concurrent places using reductions. And this year, we participated to the model checking contest, and we were able to compute more than 50% of the properties. And we will continue to improve this tool for the next editions. Thank you for your attention, and see you soon.